children of God, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I greet you all. Happy Sabbath. Happy, happy day. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Happy day. I thank God so much for this blessed Sabbath that you have given to us that we can all come and assemble here to worship our Creator. You know, there are some people who are admitted in some hospitals. Some might be at their homes, could not come to this place for worship or to attend their places for worship. But for us, God has given us this blessing. That's where and why we are here today to worship and adore our Creator God. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you so much for coming today. You could have decided to stay at home. We couldn't have done anything to you, but because you love your creator, that's why you are here. Welcome so much into our worship today. I want to welcome all our members who are in the online church, wherever they are, that please welcome as we worship together. As well as the physical church, please welcome as we worship together. Thank you so much, Elder Opere, for the introduction. I thank you for the choirs, for the good singing. I thank you for the a pulpit team. Thank you for my fellow pastors, Pastor Kali, Pastor Lenchan, and all other pastors who might be inside, please. Thank you so much for being here. I know you are praying for me. God bless you, pastors. And thank you for the pastoral families who are with us. Thank you for all leaders, uh, elders, and the treasurer, please. Uh, I appreciate your presence with us today. Uh, people of God, I want us today to have a word of God uh, from this book of Matthew, chapter 26, uh, from verse 14, I'll read to verse 25. And I, in a special way, before I read the verses, I've just remember this, there's a great friend of ours who is with us today, uh, Jedida. Uh, please welcome and welcome again to New Life SDA Church. In fact, she is a sister to my wife. She decided to come and worship. Please, you can stand and wave to this congregation. You might not get another chance to be in new life. Uh, please, just stand. You can wave to the congregation. She is the younger sister to my wife. She decided to come and worship with us today. Uh, the book of Matthew, chapter 26, I'll read from verse 14 to verse 25. And the Bible says, Then one of the twelve called Judas Iscariot, went unto the chief priests and said unto them, What will you give me? And I will deliver him unto you. And they covenanted with him for thirty pieces of silver. And from that time he sought opportunity to betray him. Now the first day of the feast of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus, saying unto him, where will you that we prepare for thee to eat the Passover? And he said, Go into the city to such a man and say unto him, The master said, My time is at hand. I will keep the Passover at the house with my disciples. And the disciples did as Jesus had appointed them, and they make ready the Passover. Now, when the evening was come, he sat down with the twelve, and as they did eat, he said, Verily I say unto you, that one of you shall betray me. And they were exceedingly sorrowful, and began every one of them to say unto him, Lord, is it I? And he answered and said, He that dippeth his hand with me in the dish, the same shall betray me. The Son of Man, God, as it is written of him, but woe unto that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It had been good for that man if he had not been born. Then Judas, which betrayed him, answered and said, Master, is it I? He said unto him, Thou hast said. And the topic of our study for the day, the 
topic for our message for the day is Lord, is it I? Lord, is it I? Shall we pray? Our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this special message that you have for us today. Thank you for the book of Matthew. Thank you for your words, our Lord Jesus Christ. So we read and try to study these verses. We pray, Lord, for the guidance of your Holy Spirit. I pray for the congregation and for myself. The Lord, we may decrease as you increase. That we may humble ourselves as we uplift you. The Lord, you will teach us to know if we are the people referred in the verse. Teach us, Lord, for here we are. In Jesus' name we pray and believe. Amen. Lord, is it I? It was not a happy moment. It has been always with Jesus and his disciples. It is the most sorrowful encounter of Jesus with his disciples. It was the most sorrowful supper that Jesus ever participated with his disciples. Not because of the meal, but because of the participants. Not because of the twelve, but because of one among the twelve. And the question comes, all of them asking, the 11 asking, Lord, is it I? Lord, is it I? Lord, is it I? 11 times. But there comes the 12th one. Master, is it I? Jesus Christ told him that, brother, you have said, you have said, it was a hard time of examination for the disciples of Jesus Christ. And this one is what I want us all to think. Because maybe you have not to think it for a long time. Or maybe you have not remembered to try to understand about this one. But I want to recall your attention today. That we may think about this one. Can it be me? Is it me? Yes, we are going to participate the Lord's Supper today. This one is, in fact, the greatest of all Sabbath for this quarter for us. And let me tell you, it's the greatest Sabbath, I think, to me. It is a blessed, not only because of the showers of rain, but because God has given me this chance to share with you this message before I die or before you die. Is it you? You see, it was the Lord's Supper. I, I see somebody's like agony. Do you know that you are going to die? Uh, the Bible says, uh, that's the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 5. The living knows that they will die. But the dead, know nothing. That's why I'm telling you that before that day comes to us, it's better I remind you this one, that is it you, is it me? The Lord's Supper, what is it? The Lord's Supper is a participation in the emblems of the body of Jesus is an expression of faith in him, our Lord and our Savior. When we come to participate, it is an expression that we believe in him as our Lord and our Savior. Hallelujah. Do you believe him? Yes, it is one way to express in your words, but it is another one to live what you express. Do you believe him as your Lord and Savior? Yes, I believe. It's my hope that you believe also. In this expression of communion with Christ, Christ is present to minister unto his people. So when we are here, we are very comfortable and confident because the master shepherd, Jesus Christ, is here to minister unto his children. Hallelujah. Yes. We are very weak, but we have the mightiest of all, Jesus Christ, to minister to us. Yes, sometimes we are very sinful, but we have the holy of holiest, Jesus Christ, 
to minister by using your weak hands as you minister unto the children of God. You remember the book, the, the book of Matthew mentioned that it was the first day of the unleavened bread. And the disciples are coming to Jesus and asking him, Lord, where will you wish that we prepare for you the Passover? The Passover and the feast of the unleavened bread, these were two feasts. And the first one, which is the Passover, usually came before the feast of the unleavened bread. In the Old Testament, this one you can read in the book of Exodus. You'll read Exodus chapter 12, the whole of it. You can read it. But now here in the New Testament, after a long time, in fact, they refer it to the period, they call it the Hellenistic periods. These two festivals were interjoined and they become one thing. And that's why the disciples are coming on the first day of the unleavened bread. And they ask Jesus Christ, the Lord, where will you wish that we will prepare the supper for you? And Jesus Christ tells them, go to that man. Go to a man in the city. Tell him that the Lord would wish to have a supper with his disciples in your house. What if it was in the city of Nairobi? We thank God we are in a city. What if in the city of Nairobi and Jesus sent his disciples to Brother Godwin? Tell him, Godwin, the Lord wants to have a supper with his disciples in your house. Uh, it comes with a cost. One of the costs, you will have to provide the necessities apart from the lamp. The one who was to prepare was to come with the lamp. And the Bible you read that Jesus Christ sends the disciples. In Matthew, it doesn't mention how many disciples. He says he, he sent out the disciples. When you read in the book of Mark, he says he sent two disciples. But when you go to look, Look, I think because he's a doctor, he was a bit specific. He says he sent two disciples, and not only two in numbers, but he mentioned their names. It was John and Peter. Therefore, these two disciples were the ones who were to go and look for the lamb for the Passover. But the owner of the house could provide the rest. My friends, you remember the Passover, the children of Israel. When it started, it started immediately when they were leaving the land of slavery the, in the country of Egypt. That, that night, they slaughtered the, the lambs, every family, and they ate meat which were roasted. And they ate when they were very ready, having their loins gathered having their shoes on their legs and having their staffs in their hands, ready to live and to go. To them, they were participating, expecting the deliverance from their country of their bondage, from their country of their slavery. For us right now, we are here, comfortably seated to God be the glory. Hallelujah. Yeah, well seated, well dressed, not in a hurry. We are going to participate it. We are participating it in the commemoration, not of the deliverance from the land of Egypt, but the great deliverance that Jesus Christ has assured his people. Hallelujah. That's why we are here. And the Bible mentions it not once, not twice. But I would like to read one thing from the book of Patriot and Prophets. If I might get it, this one is from page 277 about the implication of the Passover and the Lord's Supper. Uh, PP 277, I will read only one paragraph. The Passover was to be both commemorative and typical, not only pointing back to the deliverance from Egypt, but forward to the greater deliverance which Christ was to accomplish in freeing his people from the bondage of sin. Hallelujah. It is not only to remind us what happened in the land of Egypt, but it also remind us of the great deliverance that Jesus Christ will bring to his one. My friends, we usually call salvation is a process. And one day, we will be glorified when the king of kings will come for his word. Therefore, this participation in the Lord's Supper reminds us forward 
for that great deliverance that God and Jesus Christ has prepared for his own. Remember? Oh, the sacrificial lamp represented the lamp of God. The lamp they slaughtered in Egypt represented Jesus Christ, the lamp of God who taketh away the sins of the world. That one you can read. The book of John chapter 1 verse 29. John was baptizing, he sees Jesus, he saw Jesus Christ coming to him, and he says, look, the Lamb of God, who taketh away the sins of the world. This Lamb, from the time immemorial, is Jesus Christ. It was a symbolic of Jesus Christ who was to come. I remember that uh, this, the children of Israel, they didn't only had eat the lamb. In fact, uh, I want to mention this before I live, uh, or I, I live from there. It, it was not only that these people uh, had the lamb. They had also to eat from the lamb. They had to eat the meat of the lamb. It was not enough that the, lamp, the, Pascal, the Pascal lamb be slain. His blood war must also be sprinkled in the doorpost. So the merits of Christ's blood must be applied to the soul. We must believe not only he, that he died for the world, but that he died for me individually. It's not enough. To know that he died. It's not enough to remember he died. This one you have to personalize. To individualize. He died for sure. But not for. You can say not for others. But for you. For me. Friends. He died for us individually. We must appropriate to ourselves. The virtue of atoning sacrifice. You remember they had the isopo, which they dip, they eat. The hisopo, which they used to sprinkle the blood, was the symbol of purification, being thus employed in the cleansing of the leper and of those defiled by a contact with the dead. In the psalmist, the prayer, also it is its significance is seen. Purge me with the hisop. And I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. As in Psalms chapter 51, verse 7. Yes, the high soap. For them, it was, us, it was a physical one. For us, is your prayers. And God can cleanse you, and God can cleanse us. Remember, our Pasakal lamp, Jesus Christ, has already died. And that blood is enough. To cleanse us. Therefore, my friends, uh, these children of Israel, in their time, they did all this. For us who are here today, we have also an opportunity to do it better because we can do some references to what they did and we can make them better by participating in a better way. Hallelujah. I want to mention some few things before we come to the conclusion of our, of our lesson of the day. And this one is about betrayal. We learn in the book which we have just read that Jesus was sitting with his disciples and he told them that one of you will do what? Will betray me. Did he mention the person? Did the person know that he was betraying Jesus? Did Jesus knew the person exactly? Did he mention the person? Betrayal is something very bad. And it is more bad if it comes from the closest. Like the family members. The closest friends. It's so bad. I think it is most of the ugly words we have. A betrayal. Can you imagine, this one is a man who has been with Jesus for a long time, for three years. He had shared all privileges that other disciples have shared. He has seen Jesus working miracles. In fact, he was privileged to be with Jesus when he was healing 
the sick, raising the dead, doing all miracles, teaching, not only beside the seas, but in the synagogues. In fact, he went to the synagogue. He had all privileges to be one of the twelve. He had all privileges. In fact, not only being one of the twelve, but he was like the influential one, educated one, uh, the carrier of the little finances they had. He was the treasurer. He was very, very much privileged. But this guy, this man, had turned to be the betrayer. It's so painful. But, and in fact, you remember, he is called Judas Iscariot. And this word Iscariot, the word Ish is usually for man, but Cariot is the man from Cario. He was the only one who was not a Galilee. He came from the outside of Galilee. But he had the privilege to be among these Galileans to serve this great master. All others in the book of Matthew call him, Lord, is it I? Lord, is it I? Lord, is it I? But when it comes to this one, the betrayer, he said, Master. Master. Master means what? Rabbi. In the other language is Rabbi. Rabbi. Who is Rabbi? A Rabbi was the chief of all teachers. The best of all teachers. So he, he's asking, teacher. Yes. Teacher. Not Lord. You see? I don't, uh, I think you are getting the difference. Who is your Lord? And who is your teacher? Is there a difference? Yes, there's a big difference. Especially in the context of Matthew. The Jewish culture, Lord Jesus Christ, means more than referring to him to as a teacher. He was the Lord of the rest. And this one is coming and telling him, Lord, is it I? Lord, is it I? Lord, is it I? But when it comes to Judas Iscariot, he said, Master, teacher, is it I? And Lord Jesus Christ didn't have anything else to hide from there, just to tell him, Brother, you have said it. You see, when others were asking, he was silent. Not because he don't know what he is planning. He knows it very well. Not because he knows that they have already agreed the sum of money that he was going to get. He knows. He, 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 he has it. The MOU with him and with the priest. When I deliver him to you, you give me my money. He had everything, and he could remember everything very nicely. But this man, I think that's why he kept quiet for a long time. And in fact, Sister White says that it is because of the, the kind of tension the other disciples had. Every disciple was, was looking. Lord, is it me? No, it is not you. Lord, is it me? No. Lord, is it me? No. Lord, is it me? No. All of them have asked. The eleven have asked. But there's one man who is silent. And then now all eyes turned to him. Everybody was looking on to him. And because of that tension, he also asked, Master, is it me? And Jesus told him, you have said. And all disciples were disappointed. My friends, you see, we might have all privileges of being with Jesus Christ, of being members of the remnant church. Hallelujah. It is not an easy thing to be in the remnant church of God in this time of conviction, this time of Babylonism. It is not easy to be a member of this holy church, this church of the last days. It's not an easy thing. It's not a small thing. We might have all those privileges. You might have the privilege to be the best of all singers. Uh, my brother B is a good singer. You might be one of the best singers. Have the best of all voices. Have the best of all privileges. In fact, sit with your pastors and talk with them one-on-one. -on -one. Meet with your elders and you talk with them. You might have all privileges. You might, have, you might have encounter with the spirit of prophecy and the Bible and everything. You might have the privilege to know all truth. But again, you can again choose to be a betrayer. So, Judas Iscariot got the information that he was the one 
who is going to betray the savior of the world one who was chosen but one thing he fails to do in his entire life he never chose Jesus Christ he was chosen by Jesus Christ but he never chose Jesus Christ we might have the same privilege Jesus had called you from your life where you are you know yourself my friend others were drunkard others were adulterers others were idol worshipers others were the professional not professional mourners the professional liars do we have also some professional mourners maybe others were also in different categories of life very sinful life you remember where he called you you remember that he chosen you because he loves you hallelujah he didn't waited you to be a saint for him to choose you he chosen you before you become a saint sister why says he don't call the qualifies but he calls the unqualifies to qualify them hallelujah you might not be very qualified but he called you you might be very sinful but he called you because he needed you in heaven hallelujah now for my friends is for you to choose him he had already chosen you it is now also for you to choose him and this one now brings me to our question lord is it me lord is it me see this judah had three opportunities to confess and forsake his sinful life first one when he was in the house of martha mary and lazarus when that lady came with that very expensive alabaster he had the first opportunity but he misused it when he was with the disciples at the gate man he had another opportunity he misused it and he was with jesus and the other disciples which was the chiefest of all opportunities he had and again he missed the opportunity in fact the verses uh, let me read for you maybe just to remind you what he did in fact he he left and went out and it was night not only night because the sun had set down but it was really the night of nights to this soul called Judas Iscariot because he have decided to go away from the founding of salvation he have decided to go away from Jesus the savior of the world do you think it was a small night for him no it was the baddest night and this one pained the heart of Jesus Christ the savior of the world for he had come to save to seek and save sinners but he is one sinner who had all opportunities to repent and to forsake but again he is turning his back the savior and living into the darkness and that's how judas perished my friends when we examine ourselves which i want you to remember that the bible questions us several times the book of lamentation let me paraphrase this verse lamentation chapter chapter 3 verse 40 the bible says let us search and try our ways and turn again to the lord lamentation chapter 3 verse 40 let us search ourselves let us search and try our ways and let us turn to the lord our god in the book of first corinthians chapter 11 verse 28 the bible says but let a man examine himself let a woman examine herself and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup hallelujah let us examine ourselves the last verses in second corinthians 
chapter 13 verse 5 where the bible says examine yourselves and prove yourselves whether you are still in faith examine yourself why am i bringing this one because my friend you know yourself when god is asking when the disciples are asking their savior lord is it me lord is it i it is after a thorough examination and everybody was ready to know if it is him what next what should i do if it is me i think peter was very much ready to know and to know what is necessary for him and maybe the rest of other disciples maybe were also ready i can't read their hearts but there's one who read the hearts of men here today it is me and you and the same question is coming to us and which we have to ask our savior because of the kind of life we have been living when this opportunity always come for us for once a quarter is the best time that the church of god can search themselves that the church can revive their spiritual life that the people of god the saints the sojourners the pilgrims can renew their strength as they march up to zion is it me lord let me ask you some question you work in an environment which is very corrupt when that question comes of who are corrupt one of you is corrupt will you say lord is it me yes we work in organizations who have people who are not faithful to the call are you faithful to the call when the adulterous and adultery the marital unfaithfulness is so rampant in the world the young people the married the unmarried when these things are just too much can you and the question is being asked one of you is not faithful can you ask lord is it i and what will be the response are you faithful brother are you faithful sister have you been faithful to the call that god has called you we talk about stewardship we are the stewards of god take care of your bodies take care of the properties take care of the possessions when god calls you and this question comes to you how many are faithful stewards will you be accounted and this question will comes to you once again lord is it i of all those who are unfaithful when he says there is somebody in the church who is not faithful will you be the one who is faithful or one who is not faithful lord is it i lord is it i brothers what us to remember that in the book of first chronicles chapter 28 what us to read this few verses uh, first chronicles chapter 28 verse 9 first uh, chronicles chapter 28 verse 9 the bible says and you solomon my son know thou the god of thy father and serve him with a perfect heart and with a willing mind for the lord searcheth all hearts and understandeth all the imaginations of the thoughts if you seek him he will be found of you but if you forsake him he will cast you forever so painful serve him with a willing heart for he searches the hearts he knows our hearts me as your pastor i don't know your hearts i don't know anything about you not unless what you will share with me but there is the divine searcher who searches our hearts and he knows you he knows me he knows your ways he knows my ways in fact in the book of jeremiah chapter 17 verse 10 jeremiah 17:10 i the lord search at the heart i try the reins even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruits of his doings he searches our ways our hearts our veins 
our reigns, he searches everything. He knows you better. Uh, the pro, what do we call this man? The public prosecutor of our republic will not search you to know your heart. But God of heaven is best than any prosecutor. He knows your heart. He don't search the outside. He search the inside. He don't search what we can see. He search what nobody can see. He searches our hearts. He knows us better. In the same book, Jeremiah chapter 23 and verse 24, he says, can anyone hide anything from me? But we try so much to hide many things from God. We try to hide so much. But can, can you hide anything from God? We cannot. Therefore, let me ask you the last question. Lord, is it I? Is it you who is trying to hide from the Lord your God? Is it me who is trying to hide anything from the God of heaven? Lord, is it I? You know yourself, brother. You know yourself, brother. But now my last call is in this book, Isaiah chapter 55, verse 6. Uh, 55, verse 6 and 7. Where the Bible says, a friend, after you have such your heart, and the God who knows you better, have proven to you that there is something you need to do it better. That the question and the answer will not come to you. Lord, is it I? Let it not be you to betray your creator. Let it not be you to betray your savior. In your workplace, let others betray him, but not you. Hallelujah. In your family life, in your home, in your work, in your environment, in anywhere where you will be, let others betray your Savior, but not you. In the kind of people who love money, when they try to betray the Savior because of the love of money, let not be you, for you are a unique child of God. When others will do, against to your Savior, you don't do against your Savior. Hallelujah. When little children go against their parents, because they will go against their parents before they go against their parent, the heavenly one. If they go against their parents, they go against their heavenly father, please you don't betray your Savior. Uh, friends of God, we have a Savior who loves us so much, whom I think I will, I will never betray him. As my prayer that God will help me never to betray my Savior. And it is my prayer also that for you too, you have a Savior who loves you so much. He loves you to a point that he accepted to die on the cross for you. He loves you so much. In fact, he could die at the cross if you were the only person on earth to be saved. He could die for you. So don't try to say, no, he didn't die for me. He died for all these people in this church. No. No. If you are the only person on this world, again, he could have died just because of you. He loves you so much. Then how and why do you betray such a friend who loves you so much. As you search yourself, as you try to think of the ways of your life, how it has been, your ways up and downs, your runnings up and down, your hiding places, your hidden things, anything that might not and has not been right with you in the whole quarter, I want you to remember this question again. Lord, is it I who is betraying you once again? As I read this verse, Isaiah chapter 55, verse 6 and 7. And the Bible says, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call you upon him while he is near. Let the wicked 
including you and me. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return unto the Lord and he will have mercy upon him. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. Hallelujah. This is my call today. That you know yourself. You keep asking this question again and again. Lord, is it I? If you know that there is any wickedness in you, if you know that there is anything unrighteousness you have participated, if there is anything evil, if there is anything which was really unnecessary for you to do, anything that you have done for the whole quarter, which you see it like, is a stumbling block between the, your relationship with your Savior, my friends, you have an opportunity to seek him while he might be found. To confess and the Lord will forgive you. When we come to this important Sabbath every quarter, there are three things which are very important for us to remember. Searching of ourselves, understanding of ourselves, and taking ourselves to the fountain of all cleansing for our cleansing. And that one is Jesus Christ. Whenever you have an opportunity, not only in New Life SDA Church, but in any Adventist church, for you to participate into this special commemoration of his death and resurrection, these three things you have to remember every time. Search yourself, examine yourself, know yourself, and to go to Jesus for cleansing, and he will cleanse you. Hallelujah. It's my call today. I don't know if there is anybody who have gone against and you feel like Lord, I need your cleansing. Lord, I've done some things which are like betraying you in my life. And Lord God, I don't want to betray you. I don't want to be one of the betrayers. I want to be one of your ambassadors, but not your betrayer. I don't know if there's somebody that says, Lord, what I've done, I'm here seeking for your forgiveness. I'm here seeking for your, for your cleansing before we pray together. If there's somebody, you can stand and we pray together. Now, Lord God, you can cleanse me. You make me clean. Lord, wash me once again. Lord, give me a chance in this new quarter that I will be a faithful witness of you until you come to take me home.